In this video, I'm going to do a small tutorial on distributions in R. Distributions in R allow us to generate random data. So we can explore some of the properties of our estimator. Before we even get started with any distributions, I, I want to talk about seed setting. So this command here, it's the set.seed command, it tells R where to start in its random number sequence. It allows me to tell R to start at the same spot. To even understand the set.seed command, you really need to see how, how to generate a, a vector of random numbers. Here's the, uh, how you generate a, normal, a standard normal random vector. Five draws from a random uh, a standard normal distribution. And let's just run this. And there are, are my first five draws from a standard normal distribution. First, I'm going to run this command again without doing the seed. I get five different numbers. Run it again. Those are five other different draws from a standard normal distribution. We actually have control to go back to this particular set of random numbers. Um, we, can, uh, we, we can actually get back to that one and actually these ones, if we run the sequence of commands exactly as we did, just setting the seed again. Now let's run this, uh, this line again. Look, it's just like the, the R norm that we ran right after setting the seed. If you're generating a random sample and you, you want to make this possible for other people to reproduce, perhaps you're working on a, a collaborative project, use this seed command to tell other people and the program on their computer that if they run that seed command with the same seed, R will give them the same vector of, of numbers. We sort of saw what happened uh, if you run successive commands, you, you go to sort of random places that follow. The reason is, is that R resets the seed after, after it uses its random number generator. So it goes to a different place and we have no idea where that is. Um, so let's say, let's set the seed at 210 and see what that ends up giving us. So we set the seed at 210. One thing you might think is maybe the seed just iterates upward. So 210 goes uh, to 211 and then goes to 212. If that were the case, this vector right here, um, the second one after running 210, would be the same one as this one after I set the seed at 211. And that's just not the case. For, for a while, I'm going to draw some really big vectors uh, because I want to look at some large sample properties of estimators. If I put 20,000 instead of 5, I'm going to get 20,000 draws from a normal distribution. If I don't specify which normal distribution it is, R's default is to use the standard normal distribution. That is, the one with the mean 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Well, how, how can we test this? We could run this command. Well, one thing we could do is then just take compute the mean and compute the standard deviation. Now, keep in mind, this is the sample mean. The sample mean is a statistic, and it is an estimator of the true mean. And by the weak law of large numbers, as you take a large sample, let's say 20,000 is large, it's going to converge in probability to the true mean. Uh, so computing mean x should give me a number that's about zero. But because of sampling variability, it's going to be a little bit different. So let's compute the mean. It's pretty close to zero. If I take a bigger and bigger sample size, it was a big sample size, I got even closer. What about the standard deviation? Well, what do you think the standard deviation should be? It should be pretty close to the standard deviation it went in. So this is the sample uh, standard deviation. Uh, what do you call it? S. Um, this is the true standard deviation. That's sigma. Uh, I think they call this mu. So these are parameters. These are statistics. So the parameters that go in should uh, match the statistics that go out. And that's hopefully going to happen here. And lo and behold, that's a really good, a really close estimate of our standard deviation. Uh, let's explore a little bit more of this R norm command. Uh, I'll just stick with 20,000. The second argument is the mean. Um, and the third argument is the standard deviation. So we, we could generate from uh, fr directly from the R norm command 
we can generate uh, a mean of two and a standard deviation of three. So let's let's go ahead and see if this actually works. Those numbers ought to be pretty close to the numbers we're putting in. So these are consistent estimators of the parameters that we're putting in. So if they're consistent, a large sample, they ought to be pretty good. So it looks like this. Mean was pretty close. Standard deviation was pretty close. That's because we have a large sample size. What if we took a smaller sample size? So let's take a smaller sample size. Now what ends up happening is the mean is quite a bit off. The standard deviation is pretty good. Um, turns out that you know, the mean is going to be unbiased for the, the, the sample mean is going to be unbiased for the population mean. But there's going to have some sampling variability. So on this particular draw that we, that we took of 20 observations, we, we got a little bit higher than average. Um, on some other draw, we'll get a little bit lower than average. And it, it's going to wash out across all the different samples we can take. That doesn't mean that, um, that it's going to be a specially good estimator if we have a sample size of 20. It's just on average, it's going to be right. Um, we'd much rather have a sample size of 20,000 you can see why we really are able to nail down that parameter, um, the, the true parameter that went into this. We can compute the histogram of these uh, random vectors. That's what this command hist does. So let's take a look and see what happens with histogram. So it's going to take a while because remember we had 20 million there. This essentially fills out almost exactly what the normal distribution looks like and and we've got a nice bell shape, so looks like we're getting, we're drawing from the right, uh, the right sort of uh, shape even. And Twenty thousand was enough to fill out that bell shape. I bet even this one looks sort of bell shaped. Uh, not, not great, not bad. It's not, it doesn't really look symmetric, but only because we had twenty observations and it just happened to get an extra one here instead of here. If you had this one show up over here, you wouldn't, you wouldn't blink an eye at this being normal. So uh, that feels like it could have come from the normal distribution. So these are that's a little exploration of uh, what normal distributions do. It turns out that other commands for distributions uh, allow us to get a whole bunch of uh, different things. We can do the uniform distribution. Um, we could ask for 100 of those. And let's see what ends up coming out. We got 100 numbers, they're all between 0 and 1. Uh, well, what if I want to make it uh, uniform on 0 to 10? Will it let me do that? Well, we can give that a try. Well, sure enough, that gave me uniform 0 to 10. Well, what if I wanted to try it a different way? So 10 times our unit uh, 100. That should uh, do the exact same thing, or a very similar thing. Um, Lo and behold, I get a uniform distribution there. We could even plot the histograms. So this is my way of doing a uniform 0, 10. That uh, looks pretty uniform. Only 100 observations, so it's not really filling in that great. Let's make it 10,000 so we can see, see that, that histogram uh, fill out to a density. That looks pretty uniform on 0 to 10. Let's, uh, we can do a similar thing for the uniform distribution here from 0 to 10, asking R to do the 0 to 10-ness. And let's see what this does. And that looks about like what mine did. Um, so a couple of different ways that you can get uh, uniform 0 to 10, if you wish. Uh, so it adjust, you could adjust the endpoints however you want. This might be easier if uh, what you want to do is actually specify the endpoints you don't want to think about, well, how do I have to multiply uh, and add, uh, do some linear combinations to get the endpoints to line up right. Um, we also do the exponential. Get 100 observations from an exponential distribution. Lo and behold, 100 observations from an exponential. What does an exponential distribution look like? Well, let's make it 100,000 or 10,000 so we can actually fill out the histogram so we can see what it looks like. It looks just like what an exponential distribution looks like. W which exponential distribution is this? Uh, this can be the exponential distribution that gives us a mean of 1. Well, there are a couple of different ones of these. Uh, so mean is 1 by default. Uh, parameter is 1. 
and there are a couple of different ways to parameterize an exponential. Either the mean equals the parameter, or the mean equals one over the parameter. It turns out that R does the, the second one of these. It does mean is one over the parameter. And to see this, let's go mean R exp 10,000. That tells us how many we get. And then we can specify the parameter. Let's do two. Now we're taking the mean of a random exponential, exponential two. So we get a one over the parameter is going to be the mean. So let's go ahead and run this line and see what we end up getting. Lo and behold, it's one over two is one half, and that's going to be the mean. So, uh, so there's a little bit about the exponential distribution. Uh, we could also get uh, t distribution just for the heck of it. And we're doing a histogram, nesting the t distribution in here. Let's see, that's parameterized by the degrees of freedom. Or we can say inside here it's degrees of freedom, or we can just leave it without that. Um, we just say 5 instead of df equals 5. So let's see what this t distribution looks like. Oh boy, it's pretty spread out. Um, that's That looks kind of strange. Usually it's pretty bell-shaped. Let's make it a t with 15 degrees of freedom and see what ends up happening. Oh, that's more bell-shaped. Let's make it t with 105 degrees of freedom. Oh, that's looking a lot more bell-shaped. It's starting to look normal. And that, that actually happens as you take a bigger and bigger sample size, which corresponds to taking more and more degrees of freedom. Uh, we also do an F distribution, our F, uh, let's do 10,000, do numerator degrees of freedom, and let's do 100 denominator degrees of freedom. Um, we need those two things for an F distribution, and let's take a look and see what it looks like. Again, it's going to be a right skewed distribution. It's positive, so um, so we get some nice a nice property there. Here we can get our uh, beta, so we get random draw from a beta distribution with alpha and beta shape parameters. Uh, this is the alpha, that's the beta, and they govern the shape of this distribution. There's a beta. What does a beta look like? That's kind of a weird looking distribution. That's what a beta. 2, 3 distribution looks like. It's between 0 and 1, and it's got this kind of weird shape. What, what does a beta to 600 look like? Or is there even a beta to 600? Well, there is. And look, it's very right skewed, still between 0 and 1. Oh, I bet it would be left skewed if we did uh, uh, 600, 2. So let's, let's try that out. And then we ran it. 602. Oh, it is. It's left skewed and it's piled up against one. So, so that's what a beta distribution is. So you know how to get some uh, a skewed distribution with bounded support, uh, and you can you can skew it either direction you want. So, uh, people like beta distributions because they have that property. We could also do this for chi squared. Uh, command is going to be r chi square. One, uh, let's get a sample size of 100. We can say it has 55 degrees of freedom. Also do this for uh, R gamma. Uh, gamma has two parameters. One's a shape parameter, one's a scale parameter. Get which one's which. Uh, but we need to specify those. And we can just take a look at these. Lo and behold, we get, uh, we get some uh, draws there. You want to see what a, what a chi-squared looks like? looks kind of symmetric-ish, at least this one does. Uh, it's a little bit of a right skew. Uh, it's centered at around 55, where it should be, because it's chi-square 55, and one thing we'll know about chi-squares, they have a mean of 55. Um, we could also do the histogram for the gamma, and that one's also positive, uh, positive random variable. Uh, it's right skewed uh, for, for these parameter values. It turns out to be a pretty flexible um, pretty flexible distribution. I'm sure there are more distributions out there. I encourage you to look at the help files, but hopefully this is a nice, quick, fast introduction to how to how to use seeds, but also how to sort of explore some of the properties of uh, random vectors in R.